Hello guys. So you might be thinking why should we study strength of material right and to know about the behavior material what we should know initially. Uh, there is a thing called stress strain curve. So what is this? What it will tell about tell us about the behavior of the material. Let's know. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is Ratin Datta. Today we will be studying a very special topic that is a very special and conceptual topic I must say that is stress strain graph or stress strain diagram or stress strain curve. Okay, the stress and strain curve tells us about how the material behaves when it is loaded. The load is uh, basically uh, what we will be using will be uh, the tension force means the pulling force on the structural uh, steel that is the mild steel mainly and we will see how a graph comes up and how it behaves it has a various points such as elastic limit proportionality limit upper yield lower yield point ultimate point and the fracture point in the y-axis it will be stress it is it will be designating stress and in the x-axis it will be strain stress as you know stress as you know is the resistance per unit area of the material if it is a suppose a cylindrical body it has a circular cross section each cross section throughout the land will try to resist a force suppose you are applying a tension force and it will try to resist due to which a stress will be induced it will be in respect to the strain. Strain is the change in length by the uh, change in length to the original length. Okay. Let's see how it comes up and what we gonna know about the stress strain graph so that we can understand the behavior of the material. So we are in the computer screen and trying to understand what stress strain curve is actually about. As you can see in the left hand side portion of the screen, uh, this is the uh, sigma. Sigma is nothing but your stress. That is, uh, we, you, you usually we, that we take the unit as Newton per mm square. Okay. And in, that is in the y axis. And in the x axis, it is strain. Strain. Okay. As you know, strain in simple language, strain is nothing but the change in length by the original length. Okay. Original length that is strain. So we are trying to plot a graph that is in between stress sigma and the strain epsilon. Okay. First of all, you can go through all the points that I have shown that the point A, point B, point C, C1, C2, point E and point F. We will come to each and every point. First of all, we should know how this graph is actually coming out. Okay, first of all, we have to take a specimen, a cylindrical specimen actually, like this. Okay, like this. You can see in the right hand side portion of the screen, right? Okay, where uh, a gauge length of 50.8 mm, and the, uh, the, the what should, why I am saying gauge length, the length of the cylindrical rod is much more than that, but uh, the gauge length, the length that we have considered is the 50.8 as you can see I have shown you the bracket and the uh, diameter of the gauge uh, sorry the diameter of the uh, specimen is 12.7 mm it is actually uh, a standard specimen as said by ASTM as you all know American Society of Testing and Materials right okay this 50 point is nothing but 2 inch means the gauge length the gauge length is 2 inch which is nothing but your 50.8 mm okay and your diameter as per ASTM is 12.7 which is actually uh, 12.5 inch okay 12.7 mm this is AS this is as per ASTM the standards of ASTM this specimen is taken and you can see in the right hand side this specimen I have shown the red circle it is nothing but uh, it is nothing but 
what should be where should I write? Oh, yeah, it is extend uh, extensometer actually extensometer. It measures if there is any change in length between this point and this point. The arms of the extensometer is is touching with this thing and this thing and this the distance between the two arms is taken as the gauge length. Are you getting my point? That is 2 inch or 50.8 mm as per the standard set by ASTM. So if there, uh, if there is any change in the length due to the tension force, this extensometer will tell us the uh, deformation or you can say the extension after the tension process. Okay. So we are doing a simple tension test as you can see simple tension shape test in UTM that is universal testing machine with this specimen as said by ASTM and when this specimen is being applied under the tension pull or uh, the pull force or the tension force we can we are going to get this kind of graph or curve or diagram which is called stress strain curve right okay if you uh, if we start uh, uh, doing as you can see up to point A is called the proportional point proportionally point this is the point up to which um, the curve remains linear okay uh, and after this point you can see another point close to it very close to it is the elastic limit or the elastic point actually uh, in various materials in several uh, most of the cases this point A and B are actually the same point because they lie so close to each other and sometimes coincides with each other so up to this point B, your uh, your uh, the graph follows the Hooke's law. Okay, Hooke's law. That is stress is direct. Sorry, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, that is as per the Hooke's law. Okay, Hooke's law. It is uh, stress is directly proportional to strain. So up to this B point, the, the curve remains linear. As you can see at the bottom, I have showing this part. This portion is the linear part where the it means uh, if we unload the material, it means if we remove the force, the tension force, the material has the ability to come back to its original length or original dimensions. It can completely uh, come back to its original dimension if we uh, remove the force before touching the B point or the elastic limit. Okay. After this, uh, the, the curve goes for another point that is C1 and C2. Okay. The first point, the C1 is called, as you can see, the C1 is called upper yield point and then the second C2 is the lower yield point. Okay. At this point, there is an increase in strain. See, there is an increase in strain, but there is not much there is not much increase in loading or you can say there is not much increase in stress. A formation of creep makes the specimen becomes uh, plastic or show a plasticity nature in this part of the from C1 to C2 mainly. This part actually shows the material has gone beyond the elastic point and has touched the yield point of the material and the, point and the material has, has started showing the plasticity nature. It means if we remove the uh, tension force on this point, the material will not regain its actual shape or dimensions. It means it has gone for a permanent deformation or permanent extension, which is totally opposite to what it was before until the point B, which was the elastic point. So after elastic point, when the plastic region starts, you will see the material deforms the deformations the extension goes permanent that must the material shows plasticity as you can see at the bottom of the curve i have shown this thing as the plastic see plastic i have written this is a plastic this portion okay so after d point okay after d point so uh, it goes for a while you can see the it uh, there is a little bit disturbance or it can go as parallel this part goes as parallel to the x-axis or it can show little bit of uh, uh, up and down in the curve depends on the type of material so sometimes uh, you will you will see this portion is very less or sometimes you will see directly from c2 it will directly go to the e point now 
from D to E. D to E, this portion is a strain hardening portion. Okay, are you getting my point? So after going through large strain that occurred during last large strain means what? When the material is deforming or showing plasticity until the point D. So after D, the material has has too much straining. So after undergoing large strains that occur during the yielding until the point D, or you can see you can say uh, in C1 and C2, this the 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 steel begins to strain harden. If I have to write this uh, thing, this called strain harden. Strain hardening. Which point? From D to E. From D to E, it is showing what? It is showing. It is showing from D to E. This entire reason is the strain hardening. I have shown it here. Okay, this is the strain hardening reason. During strain hardening, uh, the material undergoes changes in its atomic and crystal structure, resulting resulting in increased resistance by the material to further deformation okay so thus uh, additional elongation requires an increase in the tensile load and the stress strain curve has positive slope between d and e it has a positive slope so in between d and e if you find out it will show you positive slope okay the load eventually reaches the maximum point that is the point e which is called as you can see it is called as ultimate point okay or you can say this is the if we correspond e to the y axis it will show you the ultimate stress further stressing of the bar is actually accompanied by reduction in the load okay see if you further uh, no further stress the bar the, the load actually decreases okay if we further uh, so at at some point a point comes where the material actually fractures okay see i have shown it here the f point is material gone for fracture so in between this e and f i have written this as you can see this is called necking this entire portion is called necking to explain necking we can go to a different thing yeah see if it is a, a ductile material what will happen it will go on forming this kind of things means the uh, the portion will go, will stretch it will go it will go on stretching at certain point uh, it will start making uh, uh, a neck kind of things okay curved structure if it is ductile but if it is brittle what will happen it will show you cup cone structure in here in uh, ductile you will see necking but in case of brittle you will see cup cone structure are you getting my point because if we compare the two graphs means stress strain curve for uh, um, ductile material and brittle material what is happening if you see uh, this material the, that we have considered the specimen is actually uh, uh, our mild steel okay mild steel which is ductile in nature that we are plotting this graph for the ductile material okay so what will happen if we draw the same thing so if for the ductile what is happening it has gone something like that but for the for the ductile but for the uh, uh, brittle material what will happen it will go it will reach the uh, ultimate point see here it is having the ill point and ultimate point and then fracture so just after ultimate it will go for the fracture in case of brittle material so if it is a brittle material you will directly see there is certain suddenly a cup cone structure formed and suddenly going for fracture but in case of ductile it will first form the neck as you can see from the point uh, E to F as you can see it will form the necking this entire region is the necking formation so after reaching F it will go for fracture now coming to simple simple things yet uh, very important if you can understand 
see there is a difference between failure and fracture okay the graph if you can remember the stress strain curve it has gone like that and like something like that right this point we are calling it as fracture point but then what do you mean by failure what is the difference between fracture and failure see of when the material has surpassed the elastic limit the elastic limit from here onwards from here onwards going there any any point this point this point after the elastic limit when it touches the ill, ill stress the stress strain curve touches the ill stress uh, or the upper yield or the lower yield when the material starts showing plasticity from that point onwards we will call the material has gone for failure it might not has broken down but at the fracture point it will what will happen it will break down either cup cone structure or by necking as we have just discussed so uh, fracture happens when the material actually breaks down and when the material starts showing the uh, plasticity nature and means permanent deformation so we can call the material has gone for failure as per the industry standards okay okay so if we plot a graph see uh, we have plot this graph right see this is for mild steel what will happen if it is for cast iron since cast iron is a ductile material sorry uh, uh, that uh, it is a brittle material no, a cast iron what will happen it will go like that and after showing ultimate point it will start suddenly it will break down because uh, as you know uh, your cast iron is a brittle material okay and your ms is a ductile material it is a ductile material and it is a brittle material okay okay what happens if it is uh, if we are drawing a another uh, stress strain curve for aluminium aluminium what will happen it will uh, uh, show, it will show you a ductility kind of thing because it doesn't have a definite ill point and it further gradually makes a transition from linear to non-linear there will be no ill point actually in case of what in case of aluminium we are speaking okay what will happen it will go like that and suddenly it will go like that from the linear part it will suddenly show non-linear are you getting so it is hard to find out the ill point of the stress strain curve for aluminium when we are plotting for aluminium material so we actually uh, so we come up with a thing called uh, arbitrary arbitrary ill point for whom for aluminium so what we do actually we as we have drawn this we draw, draw a parallel we draw a parallel and we see where it is touching the graph and we call this as this point this point this arbitrarily ill point okay so you you will like to know how much distance we you can understand that this this one and this one are parallel but what is this distance this might be the quotient right so we take this as uh, a line is drawn on the stress strain curve that is parallel that you can see okay but it is offset by uh, an uh, strain percentage you can say that is 0.2 percent since this is the strain right in the x-axis so what we will do we will take uh, a certain percentage of strain if it is zero here we can definitely find out what is the 0.2 percent of strain right from there we will draw a line parallel to this line and it will touch the stress strain curve and this will give us the ultimate yield point are you getting my point okay so if it is for rubber what how it will be if it is hard rubber it will show like this uh, not like this sorry uh, it will show even before reaching ultimate it will try to break down if it is hard rubber and if it is a uh, very soft rubber it will go like that okay for soft rubber see for every kind of material we can draw this stress strain curve but why we have taken the mild steel as our 
uh, thing because mice steel is mostly used in our buildings in bridges it is the most used structural steel so this graph that we have actually studied okay this thing that we have actually studied is is that you have to write is about the ductile material that is mild steel and you have to show this diagram and you have to mention all these points one by one are you getting my point okay so this is uh, all about the stress strain curve i hope you got get the point and once again thank you so much for subscribing liking and sharing my content please coming please uh, do come and do subscribe and keep coming for more and because this inspires me thank you thank you so much